So I've made videos before on installing home lab software on Proxmox and what I call the ultimate home server series. Well, one thing that an ultimate home server really needs is a dashboard so you can find everything. So here's the dashboard I made. It's uh, pretty simple. I got access to all the big stuff I need, the lab, the cluster, my infrastructure. Click on stuff and take me there. And it's pretty simple to set up too. So I'm going to do this in Proxmox using LXC containers because LXC containers are my favorite. And uh, yeah, come along if you want a cool dashboard like this. This project we're using today is on GitHub. It's called Dashy. They have a pretty cool demo if you want to see their demo. But uh, basically, yeah, it makes simple dashboards like this. It's entirely edited client side and then the config is pushed back to the server. Server mostly hosts static content, although it does receive the file and regenerate the static content if you change it. I tried a number of different dashboards and I like the look of this one the best. So this is the one I chose. Of course, you're free to do whatever you want, but this is the one I liked. So let's see how they recommend we install it. Scroll down. Oh, Docker. Ooh. Um, Docker. Docker Compose. If you've noticed, I'm not really a fan of Docker, so we're going to try a different way. Deploying from source. Seems pretty easy. Clone the repo. Build with yarn. Shouldn't be too hard, right? If only it were that simple to just build with yarn. So, Node.js has this massive problem with dependencies and massive dependency trees having all sort of version dependencies. So, as of the making of this video, Dashy only runs on Node.js 16. No other version. It must be 16. The latest version, though, is 20. So, fun. So, of course, I'm just like, well, I want to run Debian Bullseye because Debian Bullseye is the latest. What version do they have? Let's just check. Twelve. Okay. Maybe we could go ahead a little bit and use the almost released bookworm. Yeah, no, that's 18. We're going to have to install 16 ourselves. So since it was a slight amount of work and a slight number of commands to get this installed, I decided to write a script to do it. And you are free to copy and paste the script and run it exactly as is, but I don't like just telling someone to pipe a script into Bash and hope for the best, so I'm going to walk you through how the script works. Before we can run the script, we of course need a container in Proxmox. So yeah, 403 is okay. Name it Dashy. Give it a password for a root account. We don't need privileges here. We can use an unprivileged container. We can use Debian 11 standard as a container template. That's what I use for pretty much everything. Don't need much space. 8 gigs is fine. Uh, memory. Node.js is known for being very memory efficient. You want to give it at least 2 gigs here. And tr trust me, you'll need 2 gigs. I found that using the container ID as the IP address is very nice, so I did that. So, container's up and running. Let's log in as root. So, you can copy my script bit by bit if you want to know kind of how it works. That's what I'm going to do now. So, first we run the Node.js 16 install script from Node Source. This one is piping from wget into bash. Not a fan of that, but that's how they publish it, so that's how we do it. Once we run their install script, it'll add a new apt repository. So we do apt update and apt install node.js and also git because we need git later. And then we go to npn and using npn we install yarn. So we have the latest version of yarn. Next step we need to clone the git repo. I've chose to put it in opt dashy. Seems like a reasonable place. So once we've cloned the git repo and seeded into it, we tell Yarn to find all the dependencies and install them. Then we tell Yarn to build Dashy. Now this build process does take a decent amount of time, and it does use all that memory I told you about. Just during the build process though, not when it's actually running. 83 seconds later, Dashy finished building. How nice of it. At this point we could just run it with Yarn start, but we need to set what port and host it's listening on, and it'll crash if we don't set those. And it'd be easier just to run it with systemd, because systemd is all about running things automatically for us. Another quirk, if you just read the building from source, you don't realize that Dashy doesn't actually rebuild itself every time you change the config. So if you edit it from the UI in the web interface, it won't actually save your edits, or won't appear to. It'll save your edits on disk, but it won't rebuild the static files when you change the config, which makes it appear that your changes haven't been saved. Very frustrating. 
Solution to that is to add another systemd script that watches the config file, so every time it's changed, it calls rebuild. That's why we need to leave two gigs of memory in our container, because every time we change our config, it rebuilds. It takes 83 seconds. Node.js is very efficient. So I have three systemd scripts here. One runs dash as a service. One is a service to trigger the rebuild. And the third is a path that tells systemd to watch a specific file and trigger the rebuild service. Then at the very bottom, we tell systemd to enable those two services, and we should be good to go. Um, I've set dash to listen on port 80 on host colon colon, so any, any host. And um, that's a pretty good default. If you want to change it, it's in the systemd config. If you read the script, you'll see where it is. And uh, Dashy does support TLS, but not like automatic certificates or anything like that. And I decided it'd be easier to reverse proxy with Caddy for my environment, which I'll have a video coming on soon. Now it should be working. Let's see what we get. Look at that, we got Dashy. So if you want to edit, you can just click on the little pencil here change whatever you want, add new sections, delete old sections. Yeah, it's pretty fun. So here's the dashboard I spent some time building earlier. It's not complete, I just added most of my Proxmox servers because those are the things that I think about the most. <laughs> I have plenty of other stuff running, but I don't, uh, don't necessarily want to show it yet. It might be part of future videos. Some things I've noticed, every time you hit the save button, so when you hit edit, you go into edit mode, when you're all done with editing, you hit save to disk. Don't push save to disk until you're actually ready for it to rebuild, because it's going to do that 83 second rebuild again. And during that time, any more edits you make won't be detected correctly. Um, so make all your edits, make it nice and good, then hit save to disk, then wait a few minutes, then it's safe to keep editing again. Um, it will make all your edits live in the browser, and you can preview them there just fine. The whole thing is running client side in JavaScript. So now that we're in edit mode, how do we make it look nice? So let's say I want to add a server to my the lab section. So I come down here to the lab, click add new item. I can give it a name, new description. You don't have to give it all these fields if you don't want. Then icons. So where do icons come from? Dashy has a whole page of where you can find icons, but two of my favorites are the home lab icons set and material design icons. So I'll link below to where you can find the home lab icon set. It's kind of buried in Dashi's documentation. But basically, they have a whole bunch of logos of common projects that you might be running in a home lab, thousands of them. And if you open this one page, it, find, it just shows all of them, a big thing. And they're sorted alphabetically. And so you scroll down here and you're like, oh man, I like Raspberry Pi. Where's the letter R? Ruby, where's Raspberry? There it is. So I float over the Raspberry Pi and I see the file name is called raspberrypi.png. So because it's part of the home lab set, we prefix it with hl dash. So I come over here to dashy and I say the icon is hl and we give it a URL. So when you click on it, it takes you to that URL. You can choose if you want it to open in a new tab or the same tab or whatever. I default to opening everything in the same tab because I kind of want to use this as like a new tab page. Now I got a Raspberry Pi. Look at that. So another fun thing is generative. It'll generate a sort of random mark, kind of like what GitHub does. So you just type the literal generative as the icon, it'll generate something. So whatever it generates is based on the hash of the item attributes. So it'll be guaranteed to be the same for each person and unique for each item. Kind of cool. So hopefully you can use this to make a cool dashboard for your home lab. If you do use it for a cool dashboard for your home lab, be sure to post it in the showcase on my Discord. Link down in the description for my Discord. And uh, yeah, as always, I'll see you guys on the next adventure.